What's up, guys? A lot of you have been asking me about my thoughts on the Super Smash Bros. Nintendo Direct that we just had earlier. So I figured I'd just make a quick little video here to kind of go through everything. Uh, I'm not going to go through the video piece by piece. It's it's a long, like, 40-minute live stream that we had. But I do want to go through a lot of the points that I think that I've been thinking about. Overall, I would say that I'm still very excited for this game. I'm really looking forward to it. I will get it. Um, in the past, I did skip out on the 3DS and the Wii U version just because I was kind of super disappointed about some of the characters that they included. And uh, I had a 3DS, I didn't have a Wii U, and I wanted to wait for the next console instead of grabbing the Wii U. So, um, And I was also concerned about kind of ruining the sticks on my 3DS. So, for example, here's my capture card. This already has a, a bad enough stick because I bought it used. Stuff like that I wasn't about to um, do to my other 3DS. So I uh, just wasn't too big on trying to play it for the 3DS. But for this game, for the Switch, I'm very excited. I am a little disappointed with some of the stuff that happened today in this live stream, but uh, let's break it down. I'll go through it point by point. So the other night before the reveal, I actually went and made a little bit of a bingo card for the live stream today. So throughout this video, I will be checking off certain things as we kind of go through them. Uh, you'll kind of see how that ends up. It's pretty funny, I think. But I think overall, what I'm going to start with are the brand new characters that they revealed. Uh, obviously, with the first being Ken and the second being Incineroar. So honestly, I, I don't know what's wrong with me, but for some reason, I actually just so completely expected Ken that I wasn't even surprised. In fact, I was kind of confused when they revealed him because I thought that he had already been revealed. Maybe because just about everybody figured he'd be an Echo Fighter of Ryu. Uh, for some reason, I just kind of assumed that that was already a thing. I, I don't know what, how that happened, how my mind blended that. But yeah, so Ken was announced. Uh, he kind of looks like <laughs> kind of looks like a drug addict, to be honest with you. I don't know why they look so kind of gross and, and scruff. And uh, I don't know, they're, just, they're a little weird looking, but... Anyway, that's cool for those of you that are fans of Street Fighter, so that's great. Um, Ken's fine. Then we have Incineroar, and uh, personally, it makes a lot of sense because out of all the new Pokemon that we've gotten, especially like Gen 7 stuff, like some of the most relevant stuff, um, this is, you know, a wrestling Pokemon, so it, it kind of works. And I do think that uh, Sakurai actually tweeted after the live stream that one of the reasons that they did that was the voice actor, who I believe also voices Oak, uh, in Japan ended up passing away earlier this September. So they kind of did it also as a tribute to him and used some of his voice lines for Incineroar uh, from the anime in this character in the game. So I think that's really nice of them and, and pretty cool. But overall, just Incineroar in general, I do have to say, uh, as a Pokemon fan, back when Gen 7 was announced and we got the initial leak that showcased Incineroar, uh, I thought it was a stupid Pokemon then. I still think it's a stupid Pokemon now. Um, I was really excited to pick Litten from the beginning, that was the starter that I liked the most out of all of them. And I was just really expecting a very cool evolution to Litten, and uh, needless to say, I was... I don't think Incineroar is that bad, but needless to say, I was pretty let down with it, because I think it's just kind of a goofy wrestler Pokemon, uh, and I just expected a little bit... I don't know, something cooler, I guess. So I, I kind of thought it would be more of a Fire Panther type of Pokemon, like a quadruped. Uh, just because Litten looked so cool, I was just really expecting something awesome from it, and... Uh, I mean, if you like Incineroar, that's awesome, but for me personally, it was a letdown Pokemon back then. It's still kind of a letdown here, so it's just not a character that I was excited about. And then to have Sakurai after that say that that was it and that was the full roster uh, was kind of disheartening. So it was a big day of pretty much deconfirming a lot of the characters that fans really thought would show up in this game. But if you've been following the channel on Twitter, I've been posting a lot about wanting Isaac from Golden Sun in Super Smash Bros. I just think it'd be a really great fit, and honestly, they've had him as an assist trophy before, and then they removed him from the last game as an assist trophy, so it kind of seemed like maybe they were toying around with the idea of making him a character, because otherwise I don't really get why they just kind of uh, retired that assist trophy and didn't bring him back for the Super Smash Bros. Wii U and 3DS version. Uh, so that was kind of weird. I just thought it would be a really great choice in general, because Golden Sun is a game that a lot of us grew up with and really look back on fondly. For some of us, it was our first RPG that we ever played on the Game Boy Advance, and uh, I, I know that there's a lot of fans out there that were really excited for Isaac. The What Happened to Golden Sun video that I did in this channel, which was kind of a, of a side video, you know, not my usual content, uh, that's one of the most popular videos on my channel. So there's clearly a huge audience out there of people that really loved Golden Sun and grew up with it, and uh, I just thought... You know, if Isaac became a character in Golden Sun, much the way that Marth and Roy were in the original Smash Bros. Melee, those characters basically brought about Fire Emblem in the West. That was kind of the first key point that allowed that to happen and allowed us to even get Fire Emblem in the first place. So I do think that if Isaac was included in the roster as a part of a Smash game, 
it would reignite a lot of uh, passion and excitement for the series and honestly hopefully kickstart an entirely new game which i think is what a lot of us would want because it kind of ended after you know a long hiatus then we had dark dawn dark dawn did okay and then after that it, it was set up for another sequel but we never got it and that was kind of the sad part about that so I really would like to see another Golden Sun game at some point, someday. I talked a lot about it in that video, so you can check it out up here, but basically Camelot, the producers and creators of Golden Sun, have been doing a lot of the Mario sports games in the past little while, and that's kind of been their main focus, and I'm sure those games are great too, and I've honestly even played some of those games, and some of them have been really good. So I know that they're doing, like, good work, but it's just kind of sad to see them go from Golden Sun to kind of just uh, a little bit more generic, just Mario sports titles, and that's the only thing that they do. So as a series fan, it's just a little bit sad for me to see that and see that that's all they're focusing on these days. So yeah, I just felt that if Isaac was included, it would be phenomenal for the series and really spark some brand new life into it, and that's kind of what it needs right now. And, you know, to be honest, it's even more disheartening because there were some hints along the way that a lot of fans even noticed and pointed out and, and started retweeting. One of them being Sakurai tweeting out an image that really looks like the Golden Sun battle system. There's a huge kind of a boss monster standing in front of a whole team of characters. All the characters are standing, you know, very close together in a row. And the whole angle, just everything about it just screams like Golden Sun. So I thought that it was an actual, like, Golden Sun hint. Uh, and then, you know, with the whole Grinch leaks, Isaac was included in that. You know, even as an aside to that, so many people have speculated that Isaac would be in the game. So it was really kind of plausible, you know, in the build-up beforehand. And then we had this little mini leak that kind of showcased what looked to be the growth synergy. So it really did seem like he was going to be a playable character in this game. And so to have him relegated to what he ended up being again, uh, returning as an assist trophy for the second time, is pretty sad. Um, but yeah, some fans are still not giving up hope. They're still hoping that perhaps with the DLC characters, maybe they would make him a DLC character, but also an assist trophy. I, I don't personally know if that's possible or if they would do that. I guess it wouldn't, like, it doesn't really break anything. It's just kind of a weird way to go about it. And then there's also the part of me that kind of wonders if it's the actual Takahashi brothers who created Golden Sun, and maybe they're the reason why he's not a playable character. Because they clearly thought about Isaac. They even held off on announcing him as an assist trophy until this video, when they could have shown him last time around in the last Direct. So it's like they knew what they were doing, and they kind of set it up for a lot of fans to be disappointed in general, which is... Uh, I don't know, it's just a weird, it's a weird choice. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of that. So, that is disappointing. Then we also got the announcement that there was going to be another character that was going to be a limited time offer. Uh, so it's not going to be like a, an 100% real character in the roster because you'll only be able to get it for the first little while. That's my assumption. And that is Piranha Plant. Uh, watching everything a second time, I'm a little bit less kind of disappointed about it. I could see that it's just kind of an extra bonus character they put in, and it makes more sense considering it's just going to be a limited time offer character for people to kind of snag and grab up. And it's not going to be that big of a character, I don't think, that people will regret not getting the game at this point if they bought it, you know, a year from now or two years from now. So I can understand that, but at the end of the day, I also felt like really they developed this character when they knew fans wanted certain other characters. There were so many people on the fan list that I would have loved to see show up. Uh, Shantae was one of them. We had, some people wanted a Black Knight Echo Fighter. We had Geno, so many people want Geno. There's a good little grouping of characters that people were super excited about and, you know, honestly kind of made sense and I think would have been pretty good fits. So it is disappointed that none of those characters got in. Uh, but overall, you know, I do still want to say that I am excited for this game and I'm going to get it. So I just want to say that first and foremost. Another cool thing is that there is a lot of Fire Emblem love that I'm seeing in this game. So they have a new spirit system mode where you can equip spirits to your characters and kind of give them stat boosts and other upgrades uh, and improve them for battle. And a lot of the spirits we did see were Fire Emblem characters. We saw Severa, Sigurd, Seleph, Hanoka, Micaiah, Titania, and I'm sure there's a bunch of others that were shown that I missed. But that's pretty awesome, and I think it's going to be really cool that people can just see these characters, you know, especially for people that are not familiar with Fire Emblem or not familiar with these particular characters they're going to end up using them as they build their characters. I mean, we saw that Elise has an auto heal. So there's going to be cool stuff like that where people are really introduced to a lot of these Fire Emblem characters, and that could lead to a lot more Fire Emblem fans uh, and a lot more just interest and intrigue in the series in general, which I think is great. So that's really exciting too. Someone on Twitter actually joked about this game being a hero's gotcha system because it did show that you can actually send home spirits. So I thought that was kind of funny. And there's the whole collection aspect of trying to get each and every spirit. So 
Uh, that was interesting. Then they also had other cool spirits that I noticed from other games, like Olaf from Advanced Wars. So it just kind of seems like an even more expansive way of doing the trophy system. So I like that aspect of it. I think it's a little sad that trophies won't be there, but I totally get it. Obviously, that eats up a lot of development time, just creating all of those different trophies for stuff. So this is clearly a much better way to do it. Just take the kind of standard art or model of the character and just do a little picture of them and, and that's it. So uh, I totally get that. There was even some love for Tokyo Mirage Sessions. I thought that was pretty nice. So I know some of you guys are huge fans of that game. I still haven't tried it myself, honestly. Uh, I'll get around to it at some point, but that's cool. Some extra love there. They also showcase that for some of the spirits, you'll have to end up doing certain battles and fighting them. And it kind of is set up to, to seem like it fits with that series. So for example, they showed the player fighting Owain as a spirit. And the ensuing battle did have a kind of recolored Krom in there, which I get why they did. But I think overall, aesthetically, it's kind of a letdown because you're thinking that you're going to fight that character or it's going to make, I guess, make more sense. But you're just entering the battle and it's just another Fire Emblem character that's recolored to like kind of be like them, I guess. It totally makes sense. Honestly, it's very obvious that they couldn't, you know, make the models and honestly movesets for all of these characters for these little side missions and stuff. So I totally get it. I just think aesthetically it is disappointing to see that like you're fighting this particular image of a character and you go in and it's just like, you know, instead of Guts Man, you have a, an orange Mega Man. It's kind of weird. I, I don't know about that. I, I guess it's fine. It's just strange to me. So like I was saying earlier, we did see that Isaac is an assist trophy and also Black Knight, who a lot of people wanted as an Echo Fighter, also an assist trophy. They even used his Heroes audio lines, which I thought was interesting. I guess it makes sense if you've already got it, why record it again? And they also had Shadow and some other characters like that that people were speculating of as being playable as assists. So that makes sense. There is also the potential of DLC characters, like I was saying. I just don't know if they would do repeat characters as DLC if they already have them as assist trophies. Some fans I did also see saying maybe we'll get Felix as a DLC character. Uh, I'm all for that. I hope, I hope we see some cool DLC characters, honestly. Maybe like Shantae or somebody like that. Just spread that love. Get the characters that you missed the first time around then and put them out as DLC at least, because honestly, I would pay for that. It's, that was the last thing that I wanted out of this game overall. I was already super excited, super happy with it. The fact that they're bringing everybody back and it just looks like the ultimate version of Smash, which is obviously the name. So it's a little disappointing, but honestly, very excited still overall. I also thought some of the new features were pretty cool, like with the multiple volume levels when you switch between TV and handheld. That's gonna be super handy. I like that a lot. Uh, Me Fighters still look pretty stupid, to be honest. A lot of fans were upset about Rex from Xenoblade Chronicles kind of getting shafted being a, a Me costume. That looks kind of, eh, because it's a Me costume. Like, I get it. Me Fighters are interesting. It's cool that you can kind of literally put yourself into the game, but they still look kind of silly, especially compared to everything else. So not a huge fan of that, honestly. And then with the World of Light Adventure Mode, that does look great. I hope it's awesome. A lot of people were really enjoying the music behind it. There's an actual uh, artist who's singing. And a lot of us thought that it was Rena Strober who actually sang the Fire Emblem Fates theme. So a lot of people took to Twitter wondering if it was her. I actually even tweeted at her and she ended up responding to a lot of people saying basically, no, it's not her, which is unfortunate because uh, I think she would have done a great job. But it really did sound like her. So a lot of us were tricked about that. So that was kind of interesting. There's a lot of stuff happened in general today with this. But yeah, that kind of sums up my thoughts. Uh, overall, I am still very excited, still gonna get it. A little disappointed about some of the character picks, uh, especially at the end here. He did honestly say that we should only expect a couple more, so that was an actual thing, but I still thought there was a the potential for a lot of these fan favorites that people have been raving about uh, for the past while to get in. Because honestly, it's it has been very consistent about who people have wanted. You know, most people's top 10 list that I saw, or you know, the list that they were just putting together of characters that they wanted, have been honestly pretty similar. So it wouldn't have been that hard for Nintendo to kind of see that, see the trends and figure that out. But it does seem that they're kind of slow on the upkeep. I mean, we finally are getting Ridley in this game, but that's been kind of a joke and a meme for so long that, you know, there were other games that went by before we ended up getting him. So maybe it's gonna take until the next game to see Isaac. Who knows, honestly. I just think that it would be the greatest thing ever uh, for that series. And I'd love to see that series get a revival. So that's kind of why I'm bias towards that. So how'd we do on the bingo card? Yeah, not that great. <laughs> Honestly, it's kind of a pretty good metaphor for this whole Nintendo Direct experience in general. Not quite a bingo, but got a couple things we wanted here and there. So I guess it's fine. It's pretty cool. But yeah, those are my thoughts. 
definitely be sure to let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. Are you excited for this game? Are you going to be getting it? If you enjoyed this video, do me a solid and slash that thumbs up down below. Also be sure to get subscribed if you haven't yet so that you don't miss out on any of our new videos. And you can also follow us on Twitter for any news and updates. And we also have a pretty cool Discord server, so if you'd like to chat beyond this video about stuff, there's a brand new Smash channel that I made just specifically for this Nintendo Direct, so we do seasonal channels and seasonal conversations in there as well. And of course, as always, a shout out to our amazing patrons. Thank you guys so much. You are the lifeblood of this channel and help make videos like this possible. Thank you so much for watching. That's going to just about do it for me, and I will catch you guys in the next episode.